Today in this video, we're going to talk about how to outline. Um, many law students find this quite the task, and it is something that most people never really have to work through before getting to law school. Um, so today we're going to talk about how to accomplish this task and how to outline. So first things first, I want to point out that we think there are five key tips or strategies for how to efficiently outline for your law school final exams. First things first, we believe that you should begin outlining as early as possible in the semester. Um, you're going to find that a lot of people put this off until the last minute, uh, but really that is ineffective and that is not the best route to go if you are attempting to do as well as you possibly can on your law school finals. So start outlining early on in the semester. Two, class notes are your most important resource when it comes time to sitting down and outlining for your classes. Um, so be sure that you have those handy and available. Our third tip for you is that you should make your own outline. Uh, this is something that we feel quite strongly about. I know oftentimes, especially depending on your law school, there will be outlines floating around for your specific professor in class, and it's very tempting to simply use that instead of going through the hassle of creating your own. But truly, by creating your own outline, you are getting a feel for the law, and you are actually learning it. So the process of outlining is very important. Our fourth tip for you is don't simply type up your class notes and call it an outline. This is something that a lot of people we work with do, uh, but instead we're going to tell you how to accomplish this task of outlining. It is not simply typing up your notes and calling it an outline. Finally, our final tip or strategy for outlining is to be sure that you're organizing your outline in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, so this is all the more reason why you shouldn't use someone else's outline in preparing for a final exam. Because your outline that you create should be a way that you understand the law in a, in a way that makes sense for you because you're going to be reviewing it and memorizing it in preparation for your law school exam. So how do you outline? When you sit down to outline, hopefully early on in the semester, what uh, you want to have handy is your case book for whatever class it is that you're outlining. You want to have your class notes handy. And then if possible, if you're using some sort of resource, for instance, like a case brief resource, it would be helpful to have that, that handy if that is something that you're using. So once you have gathered up all of your materials and you sit down to outline, the very first thing you should start with is pulling out your class syllabi or syllabus. Um, if your professor has not given you one, um, I know I took a lot of classes where my syllabus was subject to change and it was constantly being modified. Um, the other thing you can do is take a look at your case book. See how they have the cases and the topics in that case book organized. And basically that table of contents or that method of organization can help guide you as like the basic framework or bird's eye view of how you should put your own so um, your own outline together. So once you have that basic framework down, whether it's you're following your professor's syllabus or you're using your case book uh, to guide you with those headings and that organization, once you've done that, you want to start uh, wherever your class notes start. So let's say you are outlining contracts and the very first topic that you have tackled in your contracts class is offer. Well, then start with offer and find the rule for offer from your class notes. It's important that you try to extract this rule from your class notes because hopefully your professor has even has given you a rule or pointed you to a specific resource to extract the rule. The reason this is so important is your professor is the one who's writing your exam and grading your exam. So it's best to use their words or their rule for that topic. So track down the rule and insert it into your outline. However, you might find that when you're doing this, you have like a, a lengthy sentence or a few sentences for the rule. And this can be something that's hard to memorize when you're reviewing your outline, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So once you've extracted that rule and you've put it in your outline, our next tip is that you should try to break it down into more manageable chunks. Um, that way, as you're reviewing it, you can treat it like elements or um, just in, you can chunk it when you're reviewing it and attempting to memorize it. It's a lot easier to remember pieces or elements than it is to try to remember you know, a few sentences at a time. So once you've extracted that rule and you've put it in your outline and then you've taken some time to figure out how you can work it into more manageable chunks, 
From there, you should move on to your cases. Figure out which cases were discussed in class and assigned in class as it relates to that topic. For instance, in my example a few minutes ago, I said pretend we're in contracts and you are outlining what is an offer. So take a look back at your class notes and find all of those cases that you covered in class regarding offer. Once you've tracked those down, try to figure out the rule. What was the whole point of reading that case? Did your professor specifically state that? Was it something brought up in discussion? Did they point you specifically to the language of the case? But track down the rule. Now, this is where many students kind of fall into the pitfall of outlining. What they try to do is insert a case brief into their outline regarding the cases that they read for that topic. But this is too much. You do not need a full case brief on every single case that was assigned for that course. Um, if you did that and inserted that into your outline, your outline would be so long, it would be impossible for you to review and to memorize. So that is not the goal. Instead, when you're extracting these cases and the rule from the case, you want to try to keep it to a sentence or two as a summary. The whole purpose of this is that when you read it and when you review your outline, you can clearly jog your memory to what the case was about. And you can do this quickly if you put it in your own words. Um, a lot of students try to make this perfectly written or very eloquent, but that is not what this has to be. Again, this should be your summary of the case um, as quickly as possible. Like I said, in a sentence or two, maybe three, depending on the case, but that is it. If you uh, are unsure of the rule or you need help jogging your memory on these cases, that's why it's very handy to have a supplement. So if you are using like a case brief supplement um, in some way, there are many different brands out there, you could turn to that supplement to try to craft your summary of the legal issue and of the rule that was supposed to be extracted from that assigned reading so that you can insert it in your own words into your outline. So once you have the rule uh, in manageable chunks, once you have uh, basically summarized those cases as briefly as possible, the next thing you want to insert into your outline are the hypotheticals or the examples that your professor has given you in class. Um, I know I used to put these in a different color when I would type my outline. That way the hypos or the examples that were presented in class stood out to me when I reviewed the outline. This is very helpful um, no matter how you put these in your outline because again, remember your professor, the one who gave you these examples or who posed those hypotheticals to you, that person is going to be drafting and grading your law school exam. Um, those hypos are kind of like a sneak peek into that person's brain and the way that they think, and it's a great way for you to start approaching and thinking about these topics as you prepare for your final exams. So always be sure that you're incorporating those examples and hypos into your outline. And if it helps to color coat them in some way, feel free to do that so that when you're reviewing it, um, it stands out to you as being an example or a hypo from class. Finally, this is not applicable for all areas of the law um, or all classes even. It just really depends on your professor's approach and the subjects in which you are studying class. But if you have read cases or if your professor has lectured on minority rules or maybe um, you're tackling a certain issue and your professor has had you read different cases and the outcomes are different, um, those are good things to highlight in your outline because that makes a very good issue for a final exam. Um, so if that's something that was covered in your class, be sure in your outline you are uh, paying attention to that and making sure that you transfer that into your outline. So again, if it's a case, make sure that you follow what we've already talked about previously. Um, be sure to summarize that case in your own words. Try to keep it at about two sentences max. Um, you know, you could put this in a different color in your outline if you wanted to, to try to quickly draw your attention that this is a minority approach or that this had a different outcome than other cases you had read. Uh, but nonetheless, those types of things should make uh, their way into your outline because they're really good to review um, as they make a very good question or issue for your law school final exams. So once you have put together your whole outline, you've extracted the rules, you've broken them down into manageable chunks, you've summarized the cases and inserted them into your outline, again, keeping them brief and to the point, uh, you've made sure that you've included examples and hypotheticals that your professor has gone over in class, and you've highlighted those minority approaches or those differences, uh, maybe in certain types of cases or on a certain issue that were covered and lectured upon in class.
Once you've done that, now it's time to review your outline. This is why it's so important to begin your outlining early on in the semester. If you are outlining at the very last minute, you're not leaving yourself a lot of time to be able to review your outline and try to memorize it in preparation for your final exam. This is why if you are outlining weekly um, or every few days, which is something that we would recommend to try to incorporate in your study schedule, you can be reviewing this all along so that way by the time your law school exam exams roll around, you're, you're pretty comfortable with your outline and what it contains. That way you can start practicing exams. Um, and again, by doing these things, you're putting yourself in the best position possible to pass and possibly uh, pass with a very high score, which we know um, that is the goal of most law students, to try to get the highest grades possible. So we hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to get in contact with us and best of luck in outlining.